Hello everyone and welcome back. Um, I'm, I'm Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to go over the second problem where I'm going to show you how to assign formal charges to the different resonance structures and uh, from there uh, using the formal charges to figure out which of the three or more Lewis structures are the most important um, or resonance structures are the most important. All right, so in this case, uh, <clears throat> the second problem I'm going to deal with is dinitrogen oxide. Uh, so dinitrogen oxide has no charge, so you'll notice that I do not have brackets, square brackets around the Lewis dot structures. So these resonance structures are three different resonance structures for this uh, substance. So the first thing you want to do is assign formal charge. So again, you can do that by, if you know the uh, common bonding patterns, or uh, you can do that by calculating using this formula here, that <clears throat> formal charge is equal to the number of valence electrons in your, in your element based on uh, the periodic table, minus the uh, non-bonding electrons, the lone pairs, minus one half the bonding electrons, uh, the electrons in the bonds, which is basically comes to one electron per bond. All right, so um, <clears throat> so let's uh, let's figure this out here. Um, so uh, here we have two two uh, bonds and two lone pairs, and so this does not fit the bonding pattern of nitrogen. So you'll expect a, a formal charge on there. Um, this is the same as the one that we got before. So if we calculate it out, again, um, it's going to be five valence electrons because uh, nitrogen is in group five, minus the bonding electrons, which is four here, four total uh, uh, non-bonding electrons. And then we got the bonding electrons, so one from each bond, so that's going to be minus two, and we get a negative one. So the negative one is there <clears throat> for the formal charge. Again, we did the same calculation here. Notice the same bonding pattern. So if I, uh, if I look at the bonding pattern here, this is a negative one formal charge. Then if I have the same bonding pattern, I should have the same formal charge. Um, <clears throat> this one, this nitrogen has two bonds and two bonds, no lone pairs. So that is not fitting the, uh, the bonding pattern as well. So again, we, we can calculate it, five valence electrons for nitrogen minus, there's no uh, non-bonding pair, so zero minus zero, and uh, we have four bonds, so one from each bond, so that's four, so minus four, and you get, and that's equal to a plus one formal charge. So this one has a plus one formal charge, and then this oxygen does fit the bonding pattern for oxygen. Two bonds, two lone pairs. So we would expect that to have zero formal charge. What about this one here? So here, um, this nitrogen does fit the bonding pattern. So this is going to be, uh, it has three, three bonds, one lone pair. So we would expect this to be zero formal charge. This one again has four bonds. Uh, just like this one. So since the bonding pattern, as far as bonds and lone pairs go, uh, it's the same. So we would expect um, this nitrogen to also have eight plus one. And here, um, the oxygen is not fit, does not fit the bonding pattern. So if we uh, figure this out, um, you would have six for the valence electrons minus six for the lone pairs and then one for the bond. So minus one electron for the bond and that gives you a negative one. So you got a negative one formal charge for that oxygen. <clears throat> um, and finally for this one, um, notice that we have uh, three lone pairs and one bond. So again, if we figure this one out, it would be uh, five for the valence electrons minus six for the non-bonding lone pairs, and then minus one for 
for the uh, the electron in the bond, and so we get uh, negative set, negative two. So this is going to have a negative two formal charge. Uh, this again has four bonds to it, so again it's going to be a positive one formal charge. And then this time the oxygen has a negative a negative three. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, three bonds, a, a triple bond. So here, if we calculate the uh, formal charge, it's going to be six valence electrons for the oxygen, uh, minus two for the lone pair, and then three bonds. So it's three, uh, one for each bond. And so here we get a plus one. So this oxygen has a plus one charge. Okay, so now that we've got all the formal charges figured out, now uh, we just go through our rules and make sure that everything uh, uh, pans out. So the first thing is, like, you'll notice that same, <clears throat> same number of bonds, same number of electrons, um, and you'll notice that the formal charges add up to the overall charge on the molecule, which is zero. So negative one plus one zero is zero. Again, zero plus one, negative one is zero. And here we have a negative two, but we have two plus one, so that cancels out and that's zero. So that fits. Um, so then <clears throat> we look at um, which structure is gonna be the best. So in terms of, um, let's say for example, the first rule is that the better structure is going to have fewer formal charges. So, uh, or non-zero formal charges. So here we have two non-zero formal charges. Here we have two non-zero formal charges. Here we have three non-zero formal charges. So we can ignore that one uh, on that count. <clears throat> the next rule is that the better uh, formal, the better structure is going to be the one that has uh, less uh, charge or smaller charges, smaller formal charges. So again, here we have ones, zeros and ones. Here we have zeros and ones. And here we have twos and ones. So we have two and two ones. So this is higher. This has a two and these don't have twos. So that would be a strike against this one as well. So that one isn't gonna, gonna cut it. Um, so as far as the best formal structure, um, this is going to be, uh, we need to, the third, the third uh, rule is that the better uh, formal structure has the negative formal charge on the most electronegative atom. And in this case, we have nitrogen and oxygen. The most electronegative out of those two is oxygen. So we want the oxygen to have the negative formal charge. So in this case, um, this is going to be the best or most important um, resonance structure. So this one would be the, the most important here. And so in this one, I forgot to mention that one is going to be the most important there. <clears throat> so, or at least I, I didn't circle it at that point. Um, so this is the most important uh, of the three. Now, that doesn't say that the other two do not contribute anything at all. That is not, that's not the case. So these two are going to be uh, contributing less to the structure than this one. This one is going to be contributing the most because of the, the formal charge rules. So this is the most important one. So our molecule is going to look more like this one than the other two. But again, it's an average of the three. But this one is the most important. Okay. Same thing with these two. So these two are still, or these two are still going to contribute to the structure of OCN minus. Um, but this one is going to contribute the most because it's the more most important one based on formal charge. And so I hope this was helpful, and I hope this makes more sense. Um, if you like this video, share this video, hit the like button, hit the bell notification so you can be notified by other videos I put out. Hit the subscription button so you can subscribe to the channel and make a comment in the comment section so that way you can, um, you know, uh, <clears throat> let me know what you think and uh, ask me questions. And it also feeds the algorithm for, you know, monetary reasons. So that's a good reason. 
So anyway, thanks for joining me and I'll uh, see you next time.